It's amazing that this was all inspired by a road trip. Doug Tompkins and three friends traveled from California and all along the Pan American Highway down to the southern tip of Chile, exploring for new waves and climbing and skiing along the way. And it was that sense of adventure that really protected this place. And as someone who, who thrives off of that type of experience, like this, this is sort of, I guess, the place I've always been looking to come to. You can't come to Patagonia without being exposed. You can see for miles and miles and the wind just whips through this landscape like nothing you've ever seen. It makes you feel so vulnerable. There's a really good reason people call it the last wild place on earth. I knew that for this assignment, I needed a light kit that I could, I could bring anywhere, whether it was on the glacier or going on a kayak or climbing or whatever. And then I knew that the aerial perspective of this place was critical. So I brought with me uh, DJI's newest lightweight drone, the Mavic Air, which is just something I could throw in my bag and it wouldn't take up any space. One of the biggest struggles as a photographer is figuring out what's beyond that next ridge. You know, what's that perspective look like? And being able to, to fly a lightweight drone with 20 minutes of flight time and identify this area, scout your location, pick your angle, and then be there within a few minutes that before would have taken me hours to hike to. I mean, any good storyteller knows that it's not enough just to be on the sidelines. You have to be immersed in these projects. You have to, you have to experience them for yourself. We're uh, halfway up a, a death slab of loose rock. We don't really know what we're getting ourselves into. For me, one of the most important things is not being weighed down by tons of gear. And I didn't want to sacrifice my image quality, and so bringing the Mavic Air allowed me to really have the best of both worlds. 12 megapixel sensor and something that can shoot 4K 30 frames per second at 100 megabits is amazing for me as a storyteller to help really bring that vision to life. When I was shooting the kayakers running over this waterfall, I know I'm, I'm literally going to have a second to make it work. And I mean, let's be honest, I'm, I'm not a drone pilot. I'm a photographer, a storyteller. So by using this drone that has incredible obstacle avoidance, it's so user friendly, I can put it in the air and not worry about having to be an amazing pilot. For me, I can focus on the action because that's the thing that's really going to help me tell the greatest story. As a photographer, you're always hoping to enhance people's experience of being there. This is the reason why Doug loved to fly because he fell in love with these parks flying his husky over these beautiful mountains and lakes. And it's the fact that now in a lightweight kit, you could have a similar experience. I mean, we live in a special time. As nasty as I was about drones for the first several years, I'm a convert because the beauty from the eye of a bird, it is one of the ways that you truly come to understand how all of those landscapes are knit together. I want the maximum number of acres around the world to be conserved and loved. And this kind of technology is an unbelievably beautiful translator toward that. You know, we may call Patagonia the last wild place on earth and, and as romantic as that may sound, you know, I, I think in many ways it's a wake up call. What I've found is that trying to convince somebody about a glacier that's receding thousands of miles away they'll never see, they'll never experience, they'll never know about. It's really hard to make change that way. So I guess I'd hope through my photographs, my videos, my, my stories, I can help share that message in a more intimate way. The end goal is that people actually come and they actually see it for themselves because that is the way that we will create positive change. <laughs>